So, this is our society about 1970. You can see that it's a bit more rounded than our triangle, but it's still a triangle shape. And these lines represent those different classes. The people at the top who own everything, the decent jobs, the lousy jobs, and the no jobs at all. And on the side, these lines represent members of those minority groups or discriminated groups that don't quite make it to the top and are found more at the bottom. One of the reasons that our shape here is so much more round is that it's held up by this net, the social safety net. The social safety net is made up of things like welfare and unemployment insurance and pensions, but it also includes things like uh, public health care, public libraries, public parks, public transit, all those things that make it easier for people to live their lives without paying a fortune. The social safety net, as you can see, is supported by the state, and it's held up by, or paid for by, people's taxes. Taxes which come more or less from people who are a bit more wealthy in society. So what the state is doing is redistributing wealth from the more affluent members to the poorer members to make sure nobody falls below the poverty line. Since the social safety net keeps the bottom up, it keeps more people in the middle, and it gives us a structure that is generally pretty resilient. So that brings us to neoliberalism. Now, neoliberalism doesn't have anything to do with being liberal, uh, tolerant, friendly to your neighbors, getting more sex, anything like that. Neoliberalism is an economic philosophy that basically says that government is way too big and it's interfering too much in the economy, and that we'd all be better off if government was smaller and just left things alone. So what they say should be done is that the taxes that the rich people were paying to maintain the social safety net should be reduced, and government should shrink, and it should give up trying to regulate the banks and the corporations and control trade and do any of those other kinds of things that government used to do. The neoliberal philosophers say, why should rich people be penalized for being rich? They should be rewarded. Why should they have to pay these taxes to support the social safety net and poor people? The rich people think this is a brilliant idea. Why should they have to pay these taxes? So they begin to give money to politicians who believe in neoliberal philosophy, and the first thing they do is to start major tax cuts. Since the same thing has happened in most other developed countries, everybody has to join in, because with neoliberal deregulation, if taxes are high in one place, corporations can simply pick up and move to someplace else. So, how is this going to affect our balloon? Well, as you can see, as these taxes are reduced, that rich people who don't have to pay so much taxes start to get richer and richer. They're moving up towards wealth. But it also means that the social safety net begins to sag, and more and more people sink below poverty. You note how this especially affects people who are members of those discriminated groups. Now, more of them are down here in poverty. And what that also means is that those few people who are a little bit higher in the top now have less in common with those at the bottom, and so it makes it harder for those people to work together. Some people are concerned about this increase in poverty, but the neoliberal politicians have an answer. They say, ah, oh, the poor people are just lazy bums anyway. They deserve anything they get. And since more minority groups tend to be towards the bottom, that produces racial and other kinds of stereotyping. It also begins to squeeze that so-called middle class, because even though they may pay a little less taxes, they now have to pay for services a whole lot more, things that used to be public but are now private. And as you can see, the distance between the top and the bottom is, is much greater than it ever was before. But the people who own and control the corporations are really happy. And that's what counts, isn't it? Until they realize that they have a problem with this new shape. Most people's incomes are stagnating or declining, and that means they can't buy as much stuff as they used to. For example, even if Bill Gates buys a million pairs of shoes, it doesn't make up for the 40 million people down here who can no longer afford a second pair. And that's a problem for the corporations and the rich people who own and control them, because if people don't buy their stuff, then the corporations go broke and the whole system falls apart. But luckily, Neoliberalism has a solution for this as well. Remember deregulation? They've deregulated the banks. So the banks can now begin to pump 
credit into the system so that people can buy just like they used to, even if they can't afford it. Here are the banks, and here comes the credit. And buying, and the economy can keep expanding, and expanding, and expanding. And everybody is really happy, because things are just like the good old days. Well, that's the end of today's experiment in neoliberalism. I hope you've enjoyed it. Now the only thing we worry about is who's going to clean up this mess.